Hello, peeps, and welcome to May the S Force be with you. Got to apologize about the background noise. I'm broadcasting from my local bookstore where I get to put things on my table like such. And um, I am recording and broadcasting from a Mac, so I'm going to be showing you stuff um, sometimes a little Mac specific. So right here, um, in my last video, we set up a developer edition account for Salesforce, and this is the screen we saw right when we signed up. And here is the setup screen. Let me show you the home screen. I think it may even bring you to the start here screen when you first log into your developer edition account. Yeah, I think so. This is how to um, learn the fundamentals. Um, build an application, participate in the community, um, and then uh, right here, like a force.com workbook. Let's go ahead and explore the setup menu. See, these are create new, actually creating records. We want to get into metadata. Um, now, when you create a developer edition, you start off with a whole bunch of, I'm going to push the plus sign, this reveals all the tabs. You start off with data already loaded in. Accounts, let's go to all accounts. Some browsers, when you select the drop down option, it automatically goes. Other ones, you have to click go. As you can see, these are all 12 of our accounts. We've got everything from Burlington Textiles Corp of America to University of Arizona. Um, so it comes preloaded with sample data. Um, I usually like to delete the sample data um, and create my own sample data based on what I'm going to be doing. And you can see in here, there's there's an order to to which you have to delete some of this stuff if you do. But before we do that, let's go ahead and show you how to pull reports of things. So I'll click on the reports tab again. If I wanted that to show up here. Um, we can customize that right here. Customize my tabs, right? Right now we just have home, chatter, and start here. I don't really use chatter a lot. Let's go ahead and remove that. Um, it's kind of like Facebook, Twitter, and Twiki kind of all rolled into one. I'm sure it's it's got great things going for it, but uh, as a lone developer, I don't use it a lot. So we want to add accounts, um, cases. Mm, contacts and uh, 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 opportunities and leads, I guess. Okay, save and reports. Oh well. Uh, we'll just go to reports for the time being. Okay, so let's say I want to see all of the cases that are in here right now. We click create new custom report. Now there's an older version of the of uh, reporting. It's um, this is called the report builder, um, and the older, I don't know what the older version is, but on the user setup now, there's a profile setup. You can select use report builder, and that's where you'll get this newer style report setup. Um, we want, mm, where is it, cases, here we go, cases, customer support reports. This is kind of where somebody working in a call center can keep track of issues with customers. It's called a case. Um, no thanks. I already know how to use this. I'll show you the walkthrough. So for a lot of objects, the default will go to all my my cases or my accounts or etc. So we want all cases. Um, we want all cases. There's no column selected. So we want um, I don't know case number. Oh dear. Okay, subject. Come on here. Um, how about you can search for any field here. I also want to collapse these. Maybe we can see what fields we want to get in there. Let's get the contact name. Wow, usually this turns green. Okay, this isn't working. Well, that's fine. Here's what we can do. Um, uh, let's create a different kind of report. 
accounts. Create new customer report. Accounts. Just accounts. All right. Create. See it go went to my accounts. Let's put it on all accounts. All right. And see we get data here. If we want to take out a field, um, we can just take that out. Field goes away. So it's kind of nice. In the old version, there was one screen for selecting columns and a separate screen for ordering columns. Um, the order columns was maybe a little nicer in some aspects because it was just like a, a, a list box where it had all of your fields selected and you can push up, down, top to reorder them. And uh, so here if we want a list of all our accounts, of the type, we don't want the type, we don't want the rating or the last activity, last modified date, this is all fake data, billing state, whatever. Let's just get account name and um, Yeah, that's all. Run report. That'll make a little 12 thing report. And uh, from this report, we can click into the names. I'm going to hold control or command on an apple. And that's going to open it in a new tab. And I can get that. And it's going to go to the Salesforce page. Now you notice on a Salesforce page, you've kind of got this base. Uh, go. You've got this base URL here right and I think that's North America with a number dot salesforce dot com and then everything to the right of this first slash is the Salesforce ID it's kinda like the unique identifier for the database table that this is in so this would be the account ID for S-Force also if you go here into setup um, let's click I don't think there's any custom objects yet I'll go ahead and make one of those for, with you. But let's look into customize accounts. I noticed it had some custom fields already created. Look at these custom fields. Customer priority. See the double underscore C right there? That's indicative of a custom field or object. Let's click into customer priority. That's going to be in account. Customer priority is going to be a field. Now watch this. Boom. See this right here? That is the unique ID, I'm going to guess, of this custom field. So, for instance, if I made a modification to this and I wanted to tell um, like my development team, oh, look at this field. Um, if I had a report of this and I pulled that, I can just attach that to the URL. Let's do this. I'm just going to get the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash na8.salesforce.com and then put that ID at the end of it, right? and that's going to bring me directly to that customer priority field. Now why is this useful? Let's for instance get a report back here, right? Let's say I want to add the Salesforce ID in front of this name. Now we're going to go over case sensitivity because um, this ID is case sensitive. See the, uh, what is that, uppercase J, lowercase Q, uppercase V for problem is when you deal with stuff like Excel um, or other things that aren't case sensitive, um, meaning it doesn't matter if it's uh, uppercase or lowercase, kind of like DOS, um, it's not going to always be accurate if there's a duplicate. Say, for instance, if that's a lowercase j and a capital Q for some other field, um, you're not guaranteed that it's going to pull the exact right one. So let's say, for instance, I want to pull account general, see down here, account ID. Boom, right? Zero, zero, 001, bunch of gibberish, it's a unique identifier. Let's run the report. Um, now let's go ahead and export details, right? Um, problem is I'm on a Mac, so I'm using Open Office. So when I pull this XLS format, the way it actually does it is that it makes it in a web page format. If you're on a Mac and you have Excel, that's fine. It'll open up in Excel. But I've found that if you open up the XLS format with Open Office, it assumes it's uh, they open up web pages in um, Writer, Open Office Writer, instead of the spreadsheet application, uh, Open Office Calc. So let's use a CSV export and uh, it's only 12 records. This should be pretty quick, or at least as quick as OpenOffice is. 
Love you, Open Office. Open with. I didn't select it. Hopefully, it just knows. To open it. Excellent. So we'll wait for that to load up. Now on here from the startup screen, you see this force.com workbook. This walks you through developing like a merchandise specialized uh, application for your salesforce.com account. Um, in my line of work, I deal with like students and tutors, um, and so really it's not a lot of sales and marketing. So the majority of our uh, Force.com platform is not native Salesforce um, functionality. So a lot of the stuff like the merchandise and stock is, I think they got rid of their products and price book tabs. Uh, for instance, like right here. And this will be open now. Excellent. Uh, I'm just going to click OK until it loads. As you can see here, see products. Um, I don't see price book anymore. I didn't really learn a lot about that, but it's basically, oh, see price books. It's a way to keep track of your products and pricing for those products. Um, so a lot of the stuff that this force.com workbook walkthrough teaches you um, is kind of accessible natively in Salesforce. Um, uh, we can't see, create a warehouse application. A lot of that's going to be native. So as you can see here, we got this. Now, let's say for instance, I want to um, send, uh, let's say I customize this report to give me like specific accounts that I wanted to email to somebody, right? Like uh, one of my... Um, one of the people under me, I wanted to send them a report of these account names, right, with links into their Salesforce uh, page. Here's what I can do. Let's say all these are going to be for that person. Um, I can just do this. I do a lot more Excel than OpenOffice, so forgive me here. But it's na8.salesforce.com slash end this alright because basically what I did is I put that initial URL there and then I affixed the Salesforce ID okay and uh, I'm just gonna copy this and paste it down All right and um, I can do it a lot better in Excel but let's say for instance I wanted to make a hyperlink um, target is this text is this apply apply close gotta love you open office there we go and I click on that it takes me right to Burlington Textiles Corp of America now obviously if that person hadn't logged in yet to their Salesforce account they would have to but um, in Excel I can write something really quick that says you know um, uh, make a hyperlink where um, B is the text and C is the link and I can just do that for all of these and that way I can do this copy go over to an email and paste that in especially Outlook um, where you're working with stuff um, that has links in it that would automatically uh, give you a list of links with the account names that linked to the Salesforce page that gave you that. Um, how am I doing on time? I think I'll wrap this up and in the next screencast we're gonna look at getting some of this info directly from Python um, which is something I'm just learning to do and I'm excited about. So I will see you on the flip side. Go ahead and subscribe, leave comments, and thanks for joining me. May the S-Force be with you.